I'm Leah Laney, Chief of Operations at Exaptus Solutions. Provided for You is a Uniforce install video to help streamline the installation process. Myself and our Uniforce specialist, Del Nuss, have installed several systems on various models, widths, and spacing. We've also compiled several videos, pictures, and helpful tips to assist you. If you have any questions, please call and request to speak with myself, Leah, or Del Ness. We greatly appreciate your business. Thank you, good luck, and have fun. The first step is to assemble all of the components onto the cylinders. Now, all the fittings are already installed onto the cylinders. The cylinders will not come like this, and for the box drills, you will need to put all 90 degree fittings onto the cylinders. So you'll first want to put the fittings on, and then this is the cast bushing that we will need to slide onto the cylinder rod that all come pre-wrapped with saran wrap that you'll need to remove first. And then take a drop of red Loctite to place on the lip of the cylinder rod. Slide the cast bushing over the rod with roughly this much of thread showing. Take a rubber mallet and give a couple wax. Set aside and do the remaining of the cylinders until all are completed. For the fittings on the cylinders, all 90 degree fittings will be pointed up, forward, except for on the front rank, the end fittings on the cylinders will be pointed toward the inside of the rank. Now we will install the cylinders onto the openers. Now this is on an air drill, but the same concept applies to a box drill. You'll want to slide the large washer over the cast bushing and through the housing. Once it's through the housing, we want to show here how important it is that the notched plate and the cast bushing notches line up in place. These need to be locked in when the nut is tightened and this keeps the cast bushing from rocking side to side. So we'll put the cylinder through the housing and place the notched plate line up the tabs and then we will put the nut on finger tight to assure that the notches are in line with one another keeps it from rocking side to side and then you'll want to make sure the rock shaft is rotated completely over so the cylinders will reach to push the pin through and then you will punch the roll pin in and come back through to tighten the nut up with an impact wrench. Here is the cylinder installed on a box drill. And now that they are all installed, it is time to install the header hoses and drop hoses. To begin assembling the header hoses, let's reference the schematics. So the schematics, this is the overview of both the front rank and the rear rank. Let's start with the front rank. Starting at the top left of the front rank schematic, you will see it says directly into cylinder. These are the 90 degree fittings that are already installed onto your cylinder. What the next step is, is to install the T fittings of all the cylinders in between the far left and far right cylinder because these 90s are already pointed inward if you remember. Once the T fittings are all installed onto the 90 degree fittings already installed on the cylinders, you now need to take the 18 and a half inch hoses and connect each fitting to the next. After the sixth cylinder, you will see a T-fitting pointed up for the feeder hose. The feeder hose is the hose that connects the manifold line body to the front rank hoses. You will take a 38 inch long hose, loop it and connect it to the next T-fitting that will connect into an eight and a half inch long hose that will then tie into the 90 degree fitting on the cylinder. While we're at it, let's take a look at how the feeder hose is routed. Here's the feeder hose tied into the T fitting. 
and routed up above the shank and into the manifold. And showing again, here is the 38 inch hose that is looped and connected into the T-fitting and then the eight and a half inch long drop hose into the cylinder. Now connect the remaining right hand side of the front rank with the 18 and a half inch long hoses connecting them all to the T-fittings that are secured to the 90 degree fittings on the cylinders. Now let's take a look at the back rank. You will see that it is quite different from the front rank. There are 10 and a half inch drop hoses that connect to the 90 degree fittings on the cylinders to then connect onto a T fitting or a 90 on the left and very far right end cylinders. So you will have a 10 and a half inch long hose from the 90 to the T fitting and in between the T fittings are 13 and a half inch hoses. After the fifth cylinder, you will see a T-fitting pointed up, again for the feeder hose. This hose will also tie in directly to the manifold line body. Then you will take a 13 and a half inch hose, connect it to the next T-fitting, and then a 10 and a half inch long hose. This will come before the frame up above. Once you get to the seventh cylinder, you will see on the schematics there, are, there is a 90 that connects to the T-fitting and a 38 inch hose you will route over the top of a frame tube and into another 90 and then T-fitting for the eighth cylinder. Here is the fifth cylinder tied into the T-fitting for the manifold connection, sixth cylinder and seventh cylinder. Here is the 90 degree fitting that ties into the 38 inch long hose to the other 90 degree fitting that you tie over the frame tube. Then complete by connecting the remaining right half of the back rank with the 13 and a half inch hoses. Here is the manifold line body attached to a bracket secured onto the frame tube. There are two hoses that route from the line body to the tractor. Port two is for pressure. Then you will have two hoses that will feed. One will feed into the front rank as we addressed earlier. And here is the hose connecting to the back rank. Everything should be installed. Now it is time to make sure all fittings and hoses are secured and tightened. It is now time to purge all the air out of the system and charge Uniforce. First, every tractor is a little bit different, but you will want to set the tractor's flow for Uniforce circuit to at least 5%. Now you need to place either a five gallon bucket or a one gallon jug at each outside end of wings for the front and the back rank. Undo the drop hoses from the cylinders and let it drop into the bucket. Rotate the rock shaft completely over so the cylinders are collapsed as much as possible. You can see the air bubbles coming out and the oil is a bit milky. Once you have a consistent steady flow, you can turn the system off and secure the drop hose back onto the cylinder. Most likely, while purging the air out of the system, your tractor will run out of oil. When this happens, the tractor will make a high-pitched noise. This is indicating that the oil is very low. Please turn off the system and your tractor and add oil at this time. Note that while activating the circuit, the pressurized hose should be the one going into port 2 of the Uniforce valve block. If you are having problems with pressure building or adjusting, switch the hoses around. 
Once the air is purged and all drop hoses are reinstalled, pressure will now be building in the system. For steps five and six, please use extreme caution when tightening leaky fittings. See steps five and six to complete charging unifors. You are now finished. Congratulations. You have successfully completed installing your very own Uniforce hydraulic down pressure system. We would love to hear feedback from you of the installation process and most importantly, your experience of operating Uniforce in the field of your emergence, of your yields, etc. Good luck this planting season.